Ephesians 2, verses 8 through 10. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift from God. Let me read that again. For by, for by grace are you saved. And it says, not of yourselves. It's not because you've worked your way through salvation. You've gotten it through God. Through God's grace is the way you get saved. Not because you earned it. Verse 9, it says, not of works, lest any man should boast. The Lord is saying, I don't want any man to say, oh, I got saved because of what I did. That's why he put verse 9 in there. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So we can brag that we're the ones who, who uh, because of our greatness, we got saved. Because of our goodness, we got known. We're not supposed to, we all deserve hell. Every one of us. Even Christians. None of us deserves heaven. None of us are even, uh, there's, I mean, there is no, zero comparison from us to God. God is so so good, so just, uh, we can't touch him. But he has loved us. He sent his son to die for our sins. And those of us who receive his son, now we have salvation through his grace. But it's not because of our works. Because if it was because of our works, then we can boast about it, brag about it. And the Lord says, no, no. You're not going to have any right to brag about anything. You're saved through grace, through my love. Verse 10, for we are his workmanship, cre created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Now verse 8, that's pretty clear, it's a pretty clear verse. You don't save yourself. Verse 9, if we keep ourselves saved, then who's doing the saving? If it's us, then we can boast about it, how good we are, like I said. But it's not us. And again, verse 10, now we will do good works because we are Christians. But that's not what saves us. i got to keep throwing that in there because there's religions out there who really believe that you're saved by your works. And I've showed you over and over through the scriptures. And you'll read them again. If you're writing down these verses, you'll read them again and read it for yourself. That works do, does not save you. In Mark chapter 10, verses 23 through 27. And Jesus looked around about and said unto his disciples, How hard shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And the disciples were astonished at his words. They were astonished because that, that's what they had been taught about the riches. But Jesus answered again and saith unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God? And there's people out there like that. There are people who who are well off and they think they're right with God because they, either they tithe, they give to the church. They think because of that they're right with God. And there's preachers out there who, who preach that. They preach if you don't have riches, then you're a failure. You're not walking with the Lord. They I guess they needed to preach that to John the Baptist. John the Baptist had nothing. And he's probably had the closest walk with the Lord than anyone I know. John the Baptist. If you don't know who John the Baptist is, read. Read your Bible and find out who he is. He, he, he lived in the wilderness. He ate locusts. But he lived for the Lord. He separated himself from the world. The Bible says we should separate ourselves from the world. Many of us don't. But I will say this. The Amish, they're pretty darn close on the way to God on the way God wants it to be. Because the Lord says, we're strangers in this world now. He says, you're not of the world anymore. And like I said, the Amish, they have separated themselves from the world. And we could learn from them. Verse 25, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Referring back to verse 23. Verse 26, and they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? And verse 27, And Jesus looking upon them saith, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. 
Verse 27, what's it say? With men, it is impossible. We can only be saved through God, through Jesus Christ. Verse 26, it says it. Who then can be saved? And Jesus answered, in verse 27, With men it is impossible, but not with God. So what's that telling you? It's saying, you cannot save yourself. You can only be saved through the Lord. John 17, 11 and 12. And now I am no more in the world, but these, speaking about his disciples, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, Keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. What's the Lord saying here? Keep. The Lord keeps you. You don't keep yourself. The Lord keeps you. Verse 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in my name. I kept The Lord Jesus said, I kept them in my name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of petition, Judas. Judas wasn't saved, like I tell you. He never addressed Jesus as Lord. He always called him teacher. That the scriptures might be fulfilled. Jesus keeps you. You do not, if you're, if again, if you think it's your works that keep you saved, you're wrong. Right here it says Jesus keeps you. It doesn't say you keep yourself I keep doing right doesn't say that it says Jesus kept us in uh, John seventeen twenty. neither pray I for these alone but for them also which shall believe on me through the word so Jesus is saying not just for my disciples these verses I just read he said not just for the disciples that I'm praying for but those that are in the world those who believe on me so it's all of us John eighteen nine. That the same might be fulfilled, which he spoke. Of them which thou gavest me, have I lost none. He hasn't lost any. Those that the Lord has given him, Jesus says, I have lost none. So if you believe you can lose your salvation, you're wrong. Because the Lord, if you become a born again Christian, if you become his, Jesus said right here, he has lost none. You're either going to believe your religion are you going to believe the word of God? You have a choice. Read the scriptures. See what the scriptures say. Did any more acts, any more acts of righteousness, did that save you? Acts of righteousness? No, because I already told you, Acts 3, I mean Titus 3, 5 says, no matter how righteous you are, unless you have Jesus Christ in your heart, you're not going to make it. Then there is no unmoral acts that can unsave you. Do you see what I'm saying? If it wasn't the acts that saved you, then how doing these things that are not of the Lord unsave you? It can't unsave you because it didn't save you in the first place. You weren't going to hell for your sins like drunkenness and stealing, lying, adultery, and so on and so on. You weren't going to sin for that. You were going to hell because you rejected Jesus. That's the only sin that sends you to hell is rejecting Jesus. The Lord says, the only, there's only one sin I cannot forgive, and that's blasphemy. And that's saying you reject. That's that's you saying you reject Jesus. And he said, that's the only sin I cannot forgive. So you weren't going to hell because you were getting drunk or stealing. So how are you going to lose your salvation if that's not the stuff that saved you? You understand what I'm saying? Ephesians 1.13 In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom also after that ye believe you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise you were sealed God sealed you with the Holy Spirit no one can break that seal you can't break the seal if you're a born, born again Christian you're not going to break the seal because you you will continue with the Lord You. This, that's what the Bible says in many verses it says, you will continue with the Lord if you're His. If you're not His, you won't continue. It wasn't that you lost your salvation. It's just you never had it. Because if you had it, you will, you will continue with Him. This seal is not a sealing like of a jar. It's the one used like uh, 
it's kind of like in the old days where they would put putty on the envelope and they did put their stamp on the putty showing who they were. This is kind of the sealing it's talking about. The Holy Spirit has sealed us. We're sealed with the Holy Spirit. We have, we're, we have the guarantee that we're going to heaven when he comes or when it's time for us to go. First John 5.18 We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. Doesn't mean you never sin. It just says it means that you don't continue in sin. But he, talking about Jesus, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself and that wicked one touches him not. What Jesus is saying here, here is he holds us securely. The devil can't touch us. Now let me say this. We have, when you're a born again Christian, you have the Holy Spirit in you. You have the power of God in you. Satan cannot touch you. He can't make you do anything. If he, if he does, it's because you have allowed him. You have allowed him to tempt you with whatever. You have allowed it. But you have the power of God in you to overcome these sins. So when the expression, the devil made me do it, uh, yeah, it could be true, but it's because you let him do it. It wasn't because you didn't have the power, because you have the power to overcome it. Now I'm going to give you some verses that are just absolute, no doubt, on who does the saving. Let me read John chapter 1, verses 12 and 13 to you. Chapter 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. They were born of God, not of man. They were born of God in the spirit. Okay, you are born of God. Once you receive him in your heart, you are a born again Christian. And you belong to Him. He is now your Father, your God. Just like parents. Parents who have children. When do your children... Is there any time when your children are, are no longer your children? Oh, I know there's, there's fights and arguments and some might even stay away. But they're still your child. They have your blood. It's the same thing here. Once we're born of God, once we give Him our heart, Jesus gave His blood that we can be uh, the children of God. So it's the same thing. Once that happens, we're His. We'll always be His. We cannot lose it. That's why I keep trying to show in the Scriptures, God keeps us. And I'll show more Scriptures on top of that. John 3.36 He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. It says He hath. He has it. He that believeth on the Son has not working for it, it says he has everlasting life. And he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life. Remember, if you don't have the Son, remember, we're all dead until we accept Jesus Christ in our heart. So until then, we have not life. We're dead. Okay? John 5, 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life. Again, he says, you have it. And, not, and shall not come into condemnation, but is, not maybe, but is, the word is, says is right here, but is passed from death unto life. Remember, you were dead, you accepted Jesus, now you have life. And the Lord said, but is passed from death unto life. John 6.37 All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Once you give your heart to the Lord, and I keep saying your heart. Remember, it's your heart that you give to the Lord. Not your mind, but your heart. Once you give Him your heart, you're going to follow Him. Like I've said in the other verses, you will continue with Him. And if you continue with Him, He says, He will not, He will not cast you out. John 6.47 Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me has everlasting life. So when a lot of times these verses say believe, the word believe in the Bible means to trust and to commit. It doesn't just mean believe, because I've already told you about how the devil believes, but he's not going to heaven. The word believe in the Bible means to trust and to commit. 
So when you say, yes, I believe, you're saying, yes, I trust in the Lord. I have committed my life to him. He gave us what we needed to be saved. He gave us the faith. That's from him. He gave us the faith. He gave us the drawing of the Holy Spirit. It is up to us if we accept it. He doesn't want to make robots out of us and, and make us accept him. That's why he's given us a free will. It's up to us if we want to accept the Lord. Okay? John 10, verse 24 through 30. Then came the Jews around about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I tell you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. If you're a child of God, you will follow him. If you're truly a child of God, you will follow him. That's what he's saying here. In verse 28, And I give them unto them eternal life, and they shall never, they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. They shall never perish. Once we become his, we shall never perish. We belong to him. Period. I'm reading you the verses here. Doesn't say anything about if you uh, if 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 you don't endure to the end or if you mess up and, and you know it just doesn't say that. If you're a true believer, you, if you're truly a born again Christian, you're you're with him. He will keep you. And right here he says, "You will never perish." Some people say, "Well, no man can pluck him, pluck you out of his hand, but you can leave his hand." Well, verse twenty seven. You will not leave his hand because verse 27 says, they will follow me. If you don't follow him, then you weren't his. Please understand what I'm saying. Verse 29, my father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my hand. I and my father are one. I'm reading the scriptures to you. Please, please read them for yourself. And hear what the Lord has to say. Second Timothy one twelve, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am ashamed. I am not ashamed, for I know whom I believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. The Lord is saying right there. He knows. We know that he is able to keep us once we have committed our lives to him. He is able. To keep us. He is able to keep us. Jude 24. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. And to present you faultless. The word faultless here means complete. Doesn't mean you're sinless. It just means you're complete. Because we won't be sinless until we go to be in heaven with the Lord. And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Okay. He says that he is able to. That he is able to keep you from falling. If if we are to keep ourselves from falling, then I might as well give up right now. I might as well just give up now because I'm going to fall. I'm going to fall. But the Lord here, he is able to keep me from falling. And I mean, he's talking about from falling, from, from just leaving him. He's not talking about sins because even Christians, you know, born again Christians, we still sin. It's not that we're never going to sin again. We still sin, but we're able to ask the Lord for forgiveness. And it's not a sin that we we uh, we just keep doing over and over and over. Some In some areas, we have weaknesses. And, and the Lord helps gives us strength to overcome those weaknesses. But as long as we're in the world, as long as we're in these bodies, we will sin. But that's not our life in general. My faith is not in me. My faith is not that I'm going to able to I'm going to be able to keep myself from falling. My faith is in Jesus that He can keep me from falling. You make the commitment, and God is the one who keeps you. If it was up to man to do it, then we will fall. But it's not up to us; it's up to God. What does the word "save" mean? The word "save" means you made it. You made it. If He was to put in here, "I'm saving." then that's something that's still working. 
But even, the word is not saving. The word is saved. We are saved. That means you have made it. If you didn't make it, that means you weren't saved. And like I said before, if you don't make it, it's because you weren't really his. You weren't really one of his sheep. Because his sheep will follow him. And you might ask, well, what are we saved from anyway? Well, we're saved from hell. If you're not going to hell, then where are you going? To heaven. Because there's only two places to go to when you die. Either you're going to make it to heaven or you're going to hell. There's no purgatory. There is not a purgatory. Read the Bible. You will not find purgatory in there. You either make it to heaven or you go to hell. And it's totally up to you. Romans 5, nine. Much more then, being now, the word is now, being now justified by his blood. Not working on it. It says now. Being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. We're going to be saved from the wrath that's coming in the future. His wrath is coming, and I've already told you about that. But we're saved from that. Now. Like I said, not working on it, the word is now. When you're reading the Bible, you've got to read every word. Not just the sentence, but the word. Every word in that sentence, you have to read it. And, and what does it mean? 1 John chapter 5, verses 11 through 13. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. That God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. Again, if you have the Son, if you have Jesus Christ in your heart, you have life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things I have written unto you that Excuse me. These things I have written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. That's it. If you believe, if you have trust and committed to the Son of God, which is Jesus, that's it. You have life. It doesn't say, he that believeth on the Son of God and. There's religions out there that put and after that. Except Jesus and. There is no and. It's just except Jesus, period. Jesus is the one who died on the cross for you. Tongues didn't, speaking in tongues, tongues did not, not, did not die on the cross for you. So it's not Jesus, except Jesus and you have to speak in tongues. Tongues is a gift from God. But he never said that you have to speak in tongues to make it to heaven. Water did not die on the cross for you. You should get baptized. The Lord said it. We should get baptized. But that's not what saves you. Only Jesus, period. And then it says that you may know that ye have eternal life. And that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. It says right here that you can know, not hope. We don't hope we're saved. Right here it says that you may know that you have eternal life. You know, there's religion out there who they believe that uh, when someone dies, uh, you can pray him into heaven. Read your Bible. You're not going to find that in there. There is no purgatory. You decide where you're going here on, on earth while you're living. You decide where you're going. Nobody decides that for you. Nobody can pray you into heaven. It's your choice. God has left it totally up to you. It's up to you where you go. Okay? 1 John 3, verses 2 and 3. Beloved, now. The word is now. Uh, this word now is very important. It doesn't say if you make it. It says, beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doeth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, meaning you're like Jesus, even as he is pure. But again, the word here is now. You're now a son of God. And once you become a son of God, that's it. You're his. You cannot lose your salvation. Works does not save you. Doing good deeds does not save you. Giving your heart to the Lord is what saves you. And once you do that, if you mess up along the way, like I said about backsliding, and we do make mistakes, that doesn't mean you lose your salvation. It means you need to get on your knees and repent and get back with the Lord. 
if you're a born-again Christian. Hope you understand what I'm saying. Second Peter 1.10 Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligently to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. So it's saying, make sure what you're choosing. Make sure this is what you do. When you become a Christian, when you give your heart to the Lord, make sure this is what you want to do. And He will keep you from falling. Now, I've read a lot of scriptures to you. I hope you, you wrote them down so you can read them again. But from the scriptures, not what I think, not my opinion. From the scriptures, I see that once you're born again, you're His, period. You're guaranteed. You got the seal of the Holy Spirit to go to heaven. If you fall, make a mistake, you're still His. But it says that we need to repent when we do that and get back with Him. We don't lose our salvation. We're just not walking with the Lord at that time. But those who don't want to continue and they want to go back into the world the way they were living, back into the flesh, living for themselves or living for their friends or whoever, when you do that, well, you, you were never His then. You never did belong to Him. You went through the motions just like I was talking about the apostate people. They had the head knowledge. They did a lot of things that Christians do. But when it came right down to it, to it they were like Judas. They decided, no, that's not what I want. So I hope this teaching helps you to understand that it, eternal security is for real. It's in the Bible. And the, and the people who use verses to show that you can lose it, you need to read those verses and see who the scripture is talking to. Like I said before, all the scriptures in the Bible are not for Christians. There's scriptures in the Bible that are for lost people or for backsliders. So when you read, make sure you know who, who the scriptures are talking about.